Hi, everyone. Welcome to Analyze Your Trade, episode number 48 for September 4th, 2018. Uh, we are broadcasting live on YouTube at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And uh, if you listen to podcasts, I'm also posting all episodes of the Timing Research shows as uh, audio-only podcasts on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, or wherever else you listen to podcasts. So be sure to search for Timing Research there. Uh, today, we will be discussing your trade ideas. So over the last few days, about 30 people submitted up to five symbols each. And I've put the list together. If you're watching the video, you should see on uh, from my screen right now the, the list for today. So we're going to get through as many of those as we can. My name is David Cosmeter. I'm the creator of TimingResearch.com. And I developed this show with uh, Dean Jenkins of Follow Me Trades. Uh, he should be joining us in, in just a minute here. Um, I also have uh, Larry Gaines and Jim Kenny. So, uh, Larry, let's start with you. Uh, okay. Why don't you tell everyone a little bit about yourself? And uh, all right, well, thanks for having me here again there uh, today, David. Um, yeah, so been uh, actively trading in the markets for over thirty years. Uh, started out my trading career uh, trading oil cargoes, tanker cargoes of crude oil back in the eighties and. Ran a real large uh, oil trading group uh, for over 10 years, one of the larger oil, oil trading companies in the world. Uh, so great experience, learned a lot about all the different markets. And so I started my own company, uh, Power Cycle Trading, back in about 2010. And it's an educational trading site that we uh, kind of specify or uh, really kind of specialize in options and using directional trading systems that we've developed and then using options to trade the various different uh, directional trade setups, you know, for better leverage and uh, risk management. So a little background on myself and thanks again for having me here. It's a lot of fun. Okay, great. Thank you. And Jim, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm Jim Kenny. I provide the content over at optionprofessor.com, an educational firm on option trading. Uh, we've been doing this for decades and, uh, Basically, we try to educate people on how to use the options for cash flow purposes, as well as hedging purposes, and of course, limited risk speculation. And there's a lot of moving parts in options. So, you know, after um, educating people on options for decades, uh, we find out that the DVDs are quite valuable to people that are trying to either learn about options or refresh uh, information that is uh, somewhat helpful as well. Okay, great. Thank you. And I think Dean is with us now. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to him. All right. Hey, thanks for kicking it off. And, uh, you know, sorry, I was a little bit late. I told you I had to wrap up another presentation, but I am glad to be here. And it looks like we got Larry and uh, Jim, huh? Yeah. Hey, Dave. My good old AYT buddies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, well, everybody knows the program here. It looks like we got a list of interesting stocks. Some we've seen before. They've come back around on the list. So we'll check in on them here and see how it's going. And uh, first one up here is... Bank of America. And so it looks like on my screen, Jim is the first icon. So Jim, you get to go first. And then Larry, okay. uh, you're first in the batting order. And then it's Larry, then it's me. So Bank of America, Jim. Yeah, the, um, the financials, you know, uh, they went up big in uh, January and they've been trying to uh, get back up there and do something the rest of the year here. And then people are trying to figure out what interest rates actually mean. Does higher interest rates mean that they can charge more? Or does higher short-term interest rates mean they got to pay out more and it negates their profitability? Also, loan demand has been dodgy. So there's a few reasons why the stocks have had a little bit of difficulty here. Um, I watch Bank of America. It looks like it's got a lot of support around 30 bucks, and it looks like uh, it may have some up upside potential. The 10-year note is uh, trading above 290 again. So if higher interest rates are supposed to be helpful for the uh, banks, then that might be helpful. Um, other stocks I keep an eye on are uh, Goldman Sachs. Tried to rally up towards 245 and slid back down into the 230s now. So there seems to be some resistance up here. Uh, personally, I own and have owned for a long time after that big drop, uh, Wells Fargo. Uh, over 3% dividend when I picked it up, and uh, I figure Buffett has done research on it, so uh, I don't feel too uncomfortable holding that, getting paid uh, over 3% while I do it. But Bank of America is a popular stock, and uh, as long as it stays above 30, you know, I would think it looks constructive. Constructive? 
Okay. Meaning I'd hold on to it, or if I wanted to uh, expand my uh, universe in financials, it wouldn't be a bad one to hold on to because 31 minus 30 is not that much of a differential. Larry, does it look constructive to you? Yeah, as long as it, well, you know, we've got that big pullback, but uh, for me, I'd wait a little bit, but right now it's right here on this uh, 382 retracement level. So, you know, holding in here around 30, 50 or so. So uh, I would wait, let it see if it can consolidate. If you're looking for this as a trade, I would just be letting it kind of consolidate sideways a little bit, see if it can hold this level right currently where it is, get above 31, that's 50% retracement. And just looking at it from a trade standpoint, it gets back above this 31, holds in there a little bit, then I could see it pushing back towards those prior highs as a trade. So uh, right now, I'd just wait. I'd watch it. And if it breaks this 382 right here, then it's down to that level that Jim was talking about, right, right around 30 bucks. And you can see a lot of price action in there, a lot of huge moving average support right here. So a lot of clusters of moving averages. So good support there at 30 but as a trade, you want to see it kind of push here, consolidate, hold over this 31, then you could get potentially moving back towards the upside. Okay. Yeah, I think it, you know, it's important. Uh, you know, each of us talked a little bit about what our focus is, but you know, um, you know, the, the, if you're a value, if you're a value investor, long-term buy and hold, you're a, you, you like yield, and you know, you don't care what share price does, you want to hold through the yields. Or if you're a swing trader, I think. Uh, Larry and I are primarily swing traders. We're just trying to catch short-term uh, high probability moves, right? So, um, you know, it depends on what you're trying to do, whether, you know, I like the stock or not. So I'm primarily a swing trader and I don't really like it. It, it had a great, super clear market starting in July of last year. You can see, you know, big, big dramatic wave three move up, you know, and the thing doubles, I think we can call that dramatic. Nice retracement, went on from there from 24 up to 32, another nice move. Now it's kind of going sideways. And it and we got this prior high as a resistance sitting above the 200. It might be support. I think we got some. I think we got some drift, and I'm not interested in drifting stocks as a as a swing trader. So nothing there for me right now. Let's see what uh, Alibaba's got going on though. Sometimes Alibaba's exciting. I think I think Jack Ma is the. He's not Bob, but he's a uh, he's he's JD and me or something like that. Yeah. No, I think Jack Ma is Baba, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah he's Jack. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, but, a, um, he's he, yeah, this, uh, he was in a little trouble. I, I saw a headline last week. Yeah. Yeah, looking looking at uh, Baba, you know, obviously it's very much tied into the China story with the tariffs and everything else. It looks like because it's been on the defensive, just like the uh, Shanghai index has been ever since the tariff talk went through, and uh, it's gone from the two ten area all the way down here to one seventy. Was down two and three, well, two point six percent today alone. Uh, it does have some lows down there at one sixty four that it's trying to hold on to, and. Uh, I'm just going to check a couple of moving averages here, but it's certainly on the defensive. A lot of people love this company because, you know, it is supposedly the Google of China, right? So basically, uh, the moving averages are telling me there were 183 and 186. They're inverted to the downside. The volume's been picking up on the drop. And so uh, probably would want to see it uh, get above the averages and start uh, getting the boat turned around before I... Uh, wanted to do much with it if you're speculating uh you know uh, if you wanted to defend against 164 uh, you could try to play that game and if any news came out that was positive uh you know there is four percent of the stock short so maybe you get some short covering but the key lines in the sand would be the 164 52 week low now and um, and then of course these moving averages 183 186 so above 183 186 uh, maybe it could be picking up momentum maybe the news has changed on it a bit and maybe it would be worthwhile or if you're a scalper trader and you want to defend against 164 okay larry the the google of china what do you think the Google of China is, you know, currently at some major support here. So would not be doing anything. I wouldn't want to short it right here. You can see this on a weekly chart, see all that price action, all that support down here. So you can see we've came down here back in uh, December 2017 to this 164 level, approached it again back in April, uh, bounced, and we're currently sitting on it right here. So I would wait. Now, if we do start getting a break here, now you know, the more you test, 
key support and resistance levels is kind of like you can think of big big tree limb or something you keep chopping chop chip 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 weakens it and finally breaks so not totally surprising if this was to break and if it breaks and closes starts closing below this kind of 164 and a half then you know you could get another nice little short for another big move down here to this major moving average just a hundred period moving average on a weekly so this thing is uh, on the ropes. I would not be shorting it until we get some separation, though, below these key support levels here. So, uh, you know, if somebody wanted to come in with some big, big size, this would be an area where they would start, you know, looking to, for a counter trend type trade. And then you've got to get back above these moving averages to the upside. So I don't see anything here as far as a, a, a trade for, you know, uh, that I'd be looking at other than potentially a short trade here, but a little bit uh nervous here to sell it right on this major support. So I would look at it though, like I said, if I get a separation below these areas here for, you know, tight short with the good tight stops, that would be the way I would be looking at it. I'm right there with you. I, first thing I noticed when I pulled this chart, I can see that I drew this line here and it's right out, like you said, right around 164, 165. Um, it just cannot get below that currently, can it? It's just, that's a, that's a hard deck. Um, what's interesting Though, as we do currently have a really nice pattern of a low, lower high. Oh, I got the wrong thickness on my pen. Let me fix this. Okay. We got a nice low, lower high, low, lower high. Right? We're under the 200 day moving average. We're under the Ichimoku cloud. If we do break that, yeah, baby. We got probably a little momentum going, but it's got to break it. Otherwise, like, you know, like the last 10 times, it may just rest there and, and go back up. So that's worth keeping an eye on. For sure, that's pretty interesting. All right, um, Jim, what do you think of uh, Jeff's company? Yeah, well, there's nothing not too much to like. How does uh, all-time highs today sound? That sounds pretty good if you're the owner, right? And uh, 2050, it hit, and then it closed at 2039. Um, on the 10-day uh, chart that I'm looking at, you know, if it, uh, between now and the end of the week, starts getting under uh, 2020, uh, um, then, it might, uh, then it might be rolling over just a little bit after this big uh, run-up. And it does have a gap way down at 1940. So for whatever reason, if we turn the market over on tech, a break under 2020 and a break under 2000, it might be indicating a, a try, an attempt to maybe fill that gap. If the news were to change, you know, if the news uh, on Unemployment Friday or some other type of news came out that was uh, non-friendly, because, you know, Trump is only a tweet away from saying uh, he's going to, uh, you know, break up these companies for all we know. So the bottom line is, is uh, it's a very strong company. It looks great. Let's just take a quick look at the moving average because my, my theory is, is when it gets extremely far away from the 20, uh, 200 day average, it's susceptible to correction, no matter what the stock's name. And uh, let's just take a quick look and see where that number comes in. Give me one. $500 more. away. It is. Uh, it's 1530 though. And what does 2050 minus, uh, that's a thousand. No, it's not a thousand. Help me with the math, Olympia, Washington. Help me with the math. It's five hundred bucks. It's five hundred bucks. Yep. Yeah, about five hundred and uh, twenty bucks, right? So what's five twenty? Uh, yeah. So it's about thirty percent above its uh, two hundred day average. Would that make sense? Yep. Yeah, and that's the region where you could get a hit. So, you know, if I was specking on it, I'd keep an eye on the twenty fifty high that it made today. And I would see if it shows any uh, fractures in it. And since it's so far away from the 200 day, if you wanted to see if it could uh, take a shot for a, a move down and uh, use that 2050 today's high as your uh, as your line in the sand and see what happens. But that does seem like it's pretty far away from the 200 day right now. It's on a tear. What do you think, Larry? Yeah, so um, yeah, Amazon obviously has been a fantastic move up, and uh, but super extended. I, I would not be buying it here except for you know kind of a really short term trade if you've got some kind of intraday setup that you could maybe get a good edge getting in. But as far as you know, putting new money to work and getting to building a big position, I would not be touching it up here. You're, you can just see all the different moving averages, how far extended you are from everything. And, you know, better places to risk your money than in something that's already had this huge move. So it's hit its trillion dollar 
level here at 2050, that was a trillion dollar company. So that's, you know, what you want to see is that it pull back and then see if it can get some consolidation, like, you know, anywhere from here, 19, uh, 2000 or even down to this 382 and then start, start it from there as a new trade. But for, for right here, would not do anything on Amazon. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you both at these, you know, nosebleed levels. You know, I, I do not chase mature trends. I wait for a pullback and a new entry point, you know, and, you know, amazing company. You remember back in the 2007, 2008, you know, when the financial crisis was happening and all this, you know, there was a lot of talk about, you know, companies that were too big to allow to fail. Um, I think the talk now between, you know, Amazon and Google and some others, you know, because of their out, out, you know, their huge size and their outweighed, you know, their out of proportion um, influence and control over information, you know, Google and Facebook and a few others, right? They may be too big to be allowed. <laughs> you know, that's a, that's an interesting debate that uh, that I think we're going to be having going forward. Uh, but that'll just have to play out. But I, I, yeah, I wouldn't try and chase Amazon up. At this level, though, I do buy nearly everything there. They got it going on, that's for sure. Uh, CDE, what is CDE? It looks familiar. Let's see. Survey says. I thought it was a, I thought it was a silver mining, but uh, Coeur d'Alene is a silver mining, I guess. But I, isn't it used to be Coeur? Isn't CDE used to be Coeur d'Alene? Uh, it's Coeur Coeur mining. Um, yeah, I know this for sure. Coeur d'Alene. Coeur d'Alene is one of the most beautiful places on earth. Uh, I don't know about this mining company, but uh, uh, yeah. what do you think of the chart? I think, I think they've been uh, around for a long time. Anyway, uh, yeah, the metals obviously have been under pressure. Uh, very low inflation, very strong dollar, not exactly the recipe for higher metal prices. And, of course, uh, a lot of different ways to participate in metals now. So the coin business, I'm sure, is a little bit rocky. Uh with the, all the alternative ways to possess the gold and silver. Uh, the I thought this was silver more than gold, but my machine's saying gold, so let's play it that way. Uh, gold's, uh, you know, um, having a, a little bit of a tradable low here at about 1160 or 1170, whatever it hit recently. And so it had a bounce, and now it's sliding back down a little bit again. Uh, the, the things in metals that look compelling to me is the silver because the ratio between gold and silver is at 82 to 1, which I consider to be an excessive level. And the price of platinum being over 400 bucks discount to the price of gold. You know, that seems kind of interesting as far as that relationship. So in the metals area, uh, the platinum being such a discount to gold and the... Um, and the silver being uh, the price relationship to gold, those two metals are more interesting to me. Uh, this stock here, I think if you buy it, you're buying an option and you'd probably buy it uh, to uh, hold on to it like an option that it, you can only lose $5 on and you hold it until uh, you know um, the paper currency goes out of business, uh, which some of the people owning the metals are waiting for. Uh, but until it does, it's a rough racket because it doesn't pay any interest and it uh, isn't growing. So uh, a couple of problems with the mining companies uh, tied to the metals, and uh, they're not going away uh, right now anyway. But uh, this thing here, uh, the 50-day average is at 7 bucks about, and the 200 days at 76. So that's a pretty excessive, you know, that's a pretty big uh, drop underneath the 200-day. So again, it would suggest that you're getting very, very oversold. So if you're a specker and you want to take a shot down here, uh, find a line in the sand you think is uh, established as a turning point. You know, maybe a weekly low that's surrounded by higher weekly lows or something like that. And you could take a stab down here and see if you might be able to get some kind of a turn. But uh, the uh, the direction on this thing is obviously pronounced to the downside. Pronounced. Very, very pronounced. Having lost nearly half its value uh, this year. Right. Um, yes. Okay. Larry, is there a play on a cool mm -hmm. Not for the way I like to look at uh, the charts and technicals. Uh, nothing here I'd be doing on CDE. Um, you know, again, be a better places to put your money to work. You can see it's broken this major support here, and it is getting way oversold. But you know, you know what? I, I can't see any great reason to buy this unless you already have it. And you want to, you know, think about averaging down. But I don't ever advise that either. So I would do nothing here. You can see this is a very tight consolidation phase, and it broke down here. So this is a seven eight six. So it could easily end up back down here at uh, around two dollars. So nothing for me. 
nothing for Larry. That's interesting. You made your comment about you know lowering the uh, the average cost basis. Um, I, I just think I, I know I know traders do it. I, I think it's a, a, a hideous strategy. Um, uh, you know, if you're playing blackjack and the dealer's got a 16 showing and you got a you know you got an 11, double down every time. But if you're in a trade and it goes down and it's against you, I don't know why you'd want to add to that. <laughs> I just don't. Um, increase your risk. Anyway, uh, you know, if this thing could find a bottom, and I'm just looking at it, I'm seeing if uh, what the short ratio is. I'm kind of interested in that. And the short ratio, uh, they don't have the data. Um, if it were to, you know, if we were to see a little support here and a high, higher low, new high, reversal, um, what I like about these low price stocks, it doesn't take much, right? 50 cents is a 10% is a move on this stock, right? And if it does find a, a bottom and show a clear sign of heading up, 10% is not a bad move, right? Try to get a 10% move on Apple right now. Uh, so it's worth watching. It's not there yet. There is not a technical setup for me there yet. Uh, but I'm certainly. And the short, the short uh, Dean, the short interest is only about 5%. So that's nothing to write home about. Yes, yeah, so you're not got it. You don't have a short squeeze set up, which is too bad because those can add some real velocity to a uh, to a you know uh, a, a short squeeze rally, a dead cat bounce, if you will. Um, so yeah, but it's not there yet. Uh, Nvidia, of course, you can't do a webinar without looking at Nvidia. Yeah, Nvidia is up again uh, today, uh, right? Uh, all time high again, 285.22, and uh, had a bear trap uh, uh, when it after the earnings came out, went down to 240, and uh, that didn't last very long. And it's already up uh, 45 bucks off of that price. So uh, it definitely uh, definitely has the strength going forward. It's obviously one of the leaders in the tech sector, and it's one of the ones people really love to own. So. Uh, you know, despite the news coming out uh, on the earnings that was not that f exciting to people, um, they flipped on that pretty fast or they covered their shorts or whatever they did. Um, you've got uh, about 50 bucks uh, above, getting to be 50 bucks above its 200-day uh, average. So it is getting a little bit overbought here, but nothing that is uh, off the charts. Uh, and um, the volume, has been drying up. 50-day uh, volume is uh, 10 million shares a day. 200-day volume uh, average is 13 million. So, you know, the volume is drying up as the market's going up. And, uh, you know, sometimes that's an indication of exhaustion. We'll have to see. The further it gets away from 236, though, uh, it's not becoming less risky. So uh, another leg up towards 300, that might be a more interesting area, you know, to be a seller. Okay. Larry? Yeah, right now... Um if you're looking at playing this, it's definitely kind of more of a shorter term type trade setup. You've had a great run up. You can see that huge explosion it had from this weekly chart here back on the August 20th. And then we've got a follow through here. These are uh, extensions for Fibonacci. So I could see, you know, a move. If you get a, a good move, the next target will be right here around 290. So, you know, about five dollars up. But the the big move has been been made, you know. And so right now I can see this starting to kind of consolidate you know, start to churn sideways, try to, you know, build kind of a base or a foundation and then plug, you know, push, push higher. So the um, semiconductor that they're starting to look pretty good again, you, you can see that um, a lot of the, the stocks in that sector are starting to perform and, and been doing real well. So I would just wait for this thing to see if you can get a little bit more consolidation and look for a kind of a lower time frame setup. So would not be buying it here. Definitely wouldn't sell it. Be looking for an opportunity to get back into it on the long side, but uh, want to be patient. Let it pull back a little bit. That's the way I look at it. Okay, I, I don't have anything to add. You know, I've said before, I just don't chase mature trends. I'm a swing trader, not a trend creator. Um, I'll stay with a trend once I get in it. Uh, but this bus left town, baby. Um, uh apple of course apple so another in the uh trillion dollar club uh amazon touched it briefly apple's solidly there had these two companies individually trillion dollars 
of market cap. I, think I heard a stat uh, larger than the GDP of like four fifths of the countries on earth. Each. Amazing. All right, you an Apple buyer, Jim? Yeah. Well, uh, no, I think if you're an owner, enjoy the ride. You got a September 12th uh, show that's supposed to get us a bigger screen, which historically has been very good for the company and maybe a larger watch to look at and things like that. So uh, they're bidding it up in advance of that, and they're bidding it up pretty good here. We're about uh, almost 30% above its 200-day average. And uh, again, similar to NVIDIA, the uh, volume seems to be drying up. I don't know if that matters at all, but I, you know, I find it noteworthy when, you know, you're uh, when you're uh, twenty percent or more uh, less uh, volume on a fifty-day basis than a two hundred-day basis, and the market's been rallying or declining during that period. So we've had a nice big advance in NVIDIA and in Apple on volume that has been lighter on a 50 day average than a 200 day average. So only time will tell if that means anything. And uh, they're both getting a little bit further away from their 200 day average. So I think um, any more leg up on these here, um, uh, you know, would again, make them more interesting to look for a sell point for a pullback or a correction. And um, again, there's no evidence of that right now. So you'd have to monitor it and see if you can get some setup that looks like a, uh, and exhaustion has been hit. I tell you one thing, uh, when you look at the ETFs uh, and the amount of money in ETFs, you know, uh, there's about five names that are in every single ETF. And if those five names started to roll over and people wanted to get their money back, uh, they would test the liquidity of the markets quite a bit because, you know, if people started redeeming ETFs, I don't, I don't know that they're going to do it anytime soon, but at some point, you know, we've been around long enough to know that people do want their money back at some point, right? Um, whether it be loans on real estate or stocks, they want money. So, uh, you know, if there was an en masse uh, selling of uh, any of these ETFs, you know, I don't know how much liquidity there would be uh, in some of these stocks because a lot of wealth in the markets are concentrated into a very few amount of companies. And I think that's always dangerous. Yeah, you know, interesting comment. I read an article oh, about six weeks ago that said actually for the, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, um, compared to the dot-com bust and the financial meltdown, that the concentration is far less by magnitudes uh, in, in a few companies, that it's actually well distributed compared to the last uh, couple cycles. So that, that's, you know, for what it's worth. Uh, Larry, what do you think of Apple? Um, again, another one that's to me overextended that doesn't offer a whole lot of great momentum to the upside. It's, it's already had a big, huge move. So it could still, you know, obviously grind higher and higher, but it's not one that, um, the, uh, the kind of setup that I like to look for, which has potential for momentum for a big, big break. So the last time we were into this, uh, Apple for, from a long standpoint was right here. Uh, you can see right in this area here where it kind of made that bull flag. So had that move up, consolidated here for about a week, week and a half, and then had the next nice pop to the upside. But since then, you know, it's been kind of a little bit, you know, kind of a small grind up. And right now it's not giving any kind of pullback on a consolidation. So nothing here I'd do. That was the last time we uh, set up anything was right, right in here. That looked like a pretty good move too. You caught a yeah. nice one. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, I feel like a broken record. I wish I had something interesting to say. Other than this is just like um, a couple others we looked at uh, Amazon, NVIDIA, now Apple. Um, it's the same answer for me. I'm a swing trader and this has swung. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, the swinging happened at 180 or 190, right? Yeah. So we'll wait for the next swing, right? Uh, hey, we're about halfway through. Let's uh let's pause from the list and and I don't think I know I know none of us have said on any of these we've been through six symbols now nobody said you know OMG buy that or sell that at the open tomorrow <laughs> right uh, so why don't we share what we do like uh, what would you what would you what would you trade at the open tomorrow Jim. Yeah, I don't have anything for the open tomorrow, but I have been uh, keeping an eye on the gaming stocks over in China, Wynn Resorts and uh, Las Vegas Sands. You know, they've been on the defensive quite a bit. And, uh, you know, if there was to be any movement over in, uh, in China with the U.S., 
Um, I thought that those companies might benefit significantly because they have such a heavy influence in Macau. So, you know, like uh, we were saying, you know, on Apple, uh, it could be a buy the rumor, sell the fact. So why don't we see how it does the rest of the week and see if you can find some formation that looks like it might be rolling over. And then there could be a, a swing to the downside in Apple at some point. Uh, because, again, people are obviously bidding it up in advance of this September 12th meeting, which uh, I guess is next week, right? Yeah. So, you know, uh, I don't have anything that's uh, slamming right now because I, I see the uh, financials are having a little bit of a difficult time. Uh, the industrials, which I was looking at, are having a difficult time. So, uh, the 10-year uh, notice going above 290 right now. So, uh, and some of these stocks that we mentioned that do look like they're extended have not shown any formation for hitting them at all. So, uh, you know, I just, uh, I'm trying to look at where the puck's going to be right now. And uh, I'm looking for a better setup than I'm seeing on some of these things right this second. That Bank of America thing, you know, if you, if you were bullish on the financials, though, uh, you know, that is pretty tight to where the support is. So that's somewhat interesting. If you think the financials are going to uh, have a leg up here in the fourth quarter, you know, this would be the neighborhood that it might come from. Okay. Larry, what do you got your... Uh your finger on the trigger on here well yes i've been looking around for something decent for for the long uh, trade setup and have have not seen anything you know over the last week because everything's so extended we've had so many great trade setups you know week two weeks back and now they're kind of extended so we've been through a lot of those here today and we talked about you know the apples and etc like like those so one thing that we did, uh, we've been watching and, and we've been in and out of a couple times here is Skyworks SWKS. And so it's just kind of channeling down lower. Um, and you can see we had this spike low here and then it retraced back up into the moving averages and that 618 retracement and failed. So this is still looking weak, looking for this to continue lower. Uh, if it can take out this, this little spike low back here at 89. Next target will be right here at this current, that spike low 88 and potentially maybe right back down there. So this one is one for a short trade setup. So that's Skyworks. Okay, that looks pretty interesting. I'm showing the uh, daily chart on gold futures. Um, you know, I think Jim mentioned it earlier, pretty much the whole year it's been in a butt slide, you know, from 1380 down to uh, 1170 pretty good slide, but we're seeing something new. And we've had a few fake outs for bottoms in the past, but uh, after this bottom here and this pull up here, if we see, you know, so we got a low, we got a higher high, we get a higher low and a new high. If we get a pattern like this, I'm gonna be going long on gold and we got a target zone, you know, somewhere in here, up around 1280. That's the middle of the Fibonacci retracement zone. Gotta see this happen first, so we got it. I got a little, if we if we go up from here and take out this previous high, that's Charles Dow um, wrote about that in the late 1890s, and he's been right ever since when he talked about uh, you know trend theory and what what makes a trend and how do you know when it wants started, and that's how you know high high or low new high. So we're gonna watch that really close, not quite ready yet, but uh, I got my eye on that one for sure. So that's a future look. Um, I was having trouble finding long trades as well. Found a couple of good shorts, though. And, uh, you know, last week, last two weeks, we were along in a couple of cannabis stocks. We did really well on those. Uh, the short trade we are in right now is uh, just got short today. Tex, T E uh, Terex company. Look at this uh, nice uh, impulsive move down. There's the correction. We're heading down. It's getting ready to go. This thing's got some momentum to the downside. So we're liking uh, TEX short. And uh, another one, I'll give two. Uh, AT&T. I'm short AT&T. Just got short on the 30th, and it's creeping its way down. Uh, it, it's in a continued downtrend. And here's, here's the idea of a swing trade, right? This thing swings big. It goes up, it swings down. It goes higher low. Look, uh, Low, lower high, lower low, lower high. Here we go to a new lower low. And so down, probably under 30 bucks. So T-Mobile looks good. There's another short. Uh, okay. Well, that was fun. Let's get back on track. Uh, Tesla. Where are we at here? Tesla. Tesla. 
Yeah. So I just had uh, one in front of me on the road yesterday, today, this morning. You know, I was looking. And I was looking at it, and I was going to say, "Is that the new future, or is that the modern version of the DeLorean?" I'm trying to figure out what. Yeah. Is this the wave of the future, or will we be talking about him like we were talking about John DeLorean decades ago? You know, the cars are cool. There's no question. The cars are cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, can they make a business out of this thing? You know, it's. Um, yeah, but I'm the guy. Seems like a little bit of a wild man who's running it, right? Wow. Well, I mean, I, I don't. I'm just talking opinion, obviously, on everything oh, yeah. I say. But uh, I mean, he's, yeah. uh, my opinion, my opinion is, is that he seems to be a kind of guy who, uh, you know, doesn't care about anything but the concept. And uh, you know, hey, listen, he's got them on the road. There are people buying them, and uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's just from valuation basis, you know, it's hard to uh, figure uh, exactly where it's going. And it's certainly all over the place. And now it's in the lower echelon of where it's been in the in the year. You know, in the 240, 280 area, whatever. Um, so, you know, again, uh, this is not something that I'd participate in because it's a total uh, jumping on a, a guy's bandwagon and hoping that he's going to take you to the promised land because the numbers right this second don't make any sense at all. And you go ahead and you so, go, go post those comments on a, on a, you know, some of the, the bulletin boards where they talk about it and, and um, you'll have, I'll you'll probably have get to, in death be, threats. Yeah. <laughs> They will explain how you just don't get it, right? Yeah. You just don't get it. Right? It's the future. I heard that. Didn't you hear that story about uh, we don't need profits? We've got eyeballs. We're just counting eyeballs down here. And that was Tesla's, the dot com boom, right? That I uh, we've got eyeballs. We don't have profits. Yeah. Tesla's got a bigger market cap than GM, and then by a lot by by a big margin, and and yeah. has yet to show a dollar of profit. So. There we go. What do you think? See, the difference around? between like it, yeah, I mean, it's a difference between this guy and like Amazon is obviously Amazon's net is so wide that you can get crazy valuations because you know a lot, all that stuff that he's selling. You know, most everybody will buy something. Here, you've got a specific car at a specific price, and there's only X amount of people that are going to buy it. So, although he might have the vision and all that kind of stuff of a Bezos or or uh, a, a, you know an Apple guy, you know. He just doesn't have a product that has that wide of a net. And so you can't be as crazy with the uh, valuation and the spending money because your product is not as uh, pervasive as uh, an Amazon and Apple or something like that. Anyway, uh, just to give you quick numbers, uh, 318 is the 200-day average, so it's underneath that. 50-day uh, average is 324, so it's underneath that. And the volume is uh, about 20% uh, higher lately while it's been declining. So all of that stuff is kind of dodgy. If you're a trader and you want to uh, go against this 280 number, I guess there's a, somebody who might want to do that going against the flow right here uh, because it has bounced out of that 280 area um, a number of times. Larry, you want to ride the ride the lightning? Yeah, well, if you just don't look at the name, okay, so pretend like you don't know what this chart is. I mean, if you just looked at the price action, uh, that I would, if I was going to do anything here, I'd be looking to set up a short trade. But it is Tesla, so you know you get a lot of uh, volatility from it. But you know, if it breaks through this low level here, this two eighty six, which is down testing again. Chip, chip, you know, breaks that, then look for a move down here to 275 pretty fast. Big, fast move down to 275. So this one would be one to, you know, if you wanted, again, don't look at the name Tesla, but if it starts separating in a closing basis, this one would be worth taking a shot on a short side with a tight stop, knowing that, um, you know, what you're dealing with. But it could easily get down here to this next level of 275 real fast. I agree. And I think, you know, I think, uh, you know, I'm typically looking for some kind of wave formation or something like that. I think just looking for these support levels to get broken. And then what's the next one? That's the way to trade this one. And uh, and just don't let Elon know your short term trading, particularly to the downside, because he will call you out on Twitter. He does not like it. You know, that's too bad, though, right? Yeah, free, country, right. free market. And right now it is a publicly traded company, so let's do what we want. Uh, VIX. I find the VIX to be so interesting. Um, I don't trade it. And uh, I'm always interested that people find the VIX to be a predictive 
thing, that there's some relationship. And if the VIX does this, then the market's going to do that. Um, I kind of look at it differently, just personally. I think that's kind of like looking at the speedometer to try and figure out what the gas pedal is going to do. Um, mm. That's my take. Uh, I think I think the VIX is a result of what happens, not a predictor. That's yeah. my thing. Um, but Jim, what do you think about trading the VIX? Yeah, with options, yeah, with options, obviously uh, you have to be aware of the VIX, but it's uh, part of the soup. It's not the only ingredient. You know what I mean? Uh, and it does tell you what has been because I think everything tells you what has been. If I could find the indicator, it tells me exactly what's going to happen. Like the Notre Dame and indicator, I'd be using it. So everything is history. As soon as we say something, and as soon as we see something, it's history. So that's got to be known for everybody right off the bat. Now, why is this sometimes a good predictor? Because you know, if it's between ten and thirteen area, it can it's considered very low, and if it's above twenty twenty five, it's considered very high. And uh, equilibrium lately seems to be around fifteen. So that's on the VIX, not this VXX thing. But um, you know, the V the VIX uh, did go down into the elevens, and then went to twelve, and now it's. 13 so it's matriculating back towards what i consider the mean which is 15 uh if you get above 15 or 16 then probably a more ser a serious correction could be expected uh but it has had a hard time getting above 20 that's the vix uh vix so this thing here right now seems to be trying to turn up a little bit uh, but you're going to have to see like the s p you know, take out like 2875 or something like that to get this VIX moving, 2850. It's going to have to go something like that to get that VIX moving. Otherwise, it's going to meander. And if it's meandering, it's a possibility that the stock market keeps going and going and going because uh, a lower VIX, uh, you know, is not a negative for stocks unless it starts breaking up like it's trying to do, but it's not really doing a great job right now. Uh, let me just uh, look at these moving averages real quick to tell you where it might be jumping above it. The volume on this was 34 million shares today. Well, I'm not trading it, but apparently 34 million other people are trading it, right? Um, yeah, so you're 200 days. Or, or 34 that, people. Or 34 people with a lot of money, right? Um, yeah. Okay, so anyway, the 200 days at 38, so it's getting a little on the oversold side, and the 50 day is 34. So it's clearly in a downward path, and that's why the stock market is obviously even an upward path because it's a little bit of a contrary indicator. And uh, the only thing you could say is it's getting a, a little bit extended because it's about nine bucks under it, uh, which uh, in terms of percentage, is about 23% underneath it. So it's gotten a little bit on the oversold basis down here, uh, but unless this S&P starts breaking some of these uh, support levels a little bit, uh, this thing is going to be in a quandary. Okay. Do you trade the VIX, Larry? Uh, from time to time, we'll just do the the VIX, and and that one is just, uh, just we'll do some call spreads, um, you know, out in time just to uh, – you know, when you get real low, like say right now, I was just kind of looking at it. Um, you can get some real cheap options you can buy on the VIX. You know, so if you get a setup where you think you could get a pop volatility, you know, to the upside. And again, it's going to be tied to breaking down of the S&P, right? So it's like, you know, what what's what's wagging the tail there, the S&P or the VIX. So if you have a a hunch or if you, you think based on your indicators or based on, you know, what you trade that the, the S and P is going to have, you know, is that a key support level and it looks like there's a good high probability for it to break support. Then the VIX is a great way to take advantage of that for real cheap option plays. So if that happens then what I like to do is kind of a pretty simple setup. You just go, if it's trading, you know, wherever it's trading at the money, just uh, buy like a dollar higher and do a, a call spread and do, further out and you can get, you know, 30 cents or, or 40 cents max risk. And, you know, you have potential to make a really big, huge return on your at risk. So I like to do it that way. And right now I don't see that. I don't see that setting up. So I'd be looking at like, you know, in, in conjunction, I'd be looking at the SPY SPX. And does it look like they're going to crater right now? It doesn't look to me like they're going to crater. It's just kind of a, a drift lower, you know, but if you were thinking or making the, uh, you know, making a, an assumption on the market cratering, then the VIX is a great way to play it. But right here, I just see it kind of maybe drifting down into this level. And then you've got people that want to, to buy back in the market. So I'm not seeing a, 
huge collapse in the market. We could easily drift down here, you know, just into this level of 285, but a, a collapse, I don't see it. And if you thought of, there was going to be a collapse, the VIX is a great way to do it, get buy real cheap options and play that kind of scenario. It seems also there could be some rotation out of Europe and Asia uh, continuing into the U.S. because uh, the DAX to me looks like it's holding on for dear life and the Chinese stock market is rolling over. So there could be some people rolling out of Europe and uh, and the uh, Asia markets and hitting the U.S., figuring that these tariffs are really going to uh, goof up their economies and the U.S. would be the winner in it or at least temporarily look like the winner. Interesting. Um, you know, earlier this year, there was a, a VIX related ETF that blew up and, you know, basically, basically vanished. Um, and when that happened, it made me step back and I've just, I've just made a new rule. I don't, I don't trade ETFs that aren't based on tangible assets. I just, I used to trade the VIX and I just said, you know, there's so many other good things and I'm you know, I don't trade leveraged ETFs anymore. And I don't trade, uh, anything that's based on an intangible like the VIX. So I just don't trade it. And yeah, that's my choice. Yeah, and no, I think it's do there's, you other find stuff it very, there's other stuff to trade. Plenty of other stuff. Yeah, Dean, you were uh, finding out that they don't trade really one for one with what's going on. Well, their, their, yeah. their pricing mechanisms are a little bit dodgy as far as trying to figure out, you know, exactly how they're priced out, right? Yeah. And yeah. and ultimately it, it's it's not based on a tangible asset. Right. S SPY is, GLD is. Right? Uh, so like I said, that's my choice. Um, I know lots of people trade it successfully. Hats off, I just, I just choose. There's thousands of other instruments to go trade. I can always find something that I'm comfortable with. I think that's something I teach in my trading. I guess you guys would probably agree is whatever people are trading, they gotta be comfortable with. It shouldn't keep you up at night. And if it does, go do something else. So that's my thing. Uh, when? When would be right now. What do you think of when, Jim? Well, I guess I was saying earlier, you know, this is one of the two, uh, this and the sands are the ones that I'm looking at uh, because they are getting uh, discounted down pretty good. Uh, again, uh, because of the, I think, my opinion is the Macau situation. And... Um, you know, things get hairy enough. Lord, Lord knows what happens over to their properties. Uh, today, again, uh, down almost uh, three over three and a half percent today alone, bouncing a little bit up in the aftermarket. Uh, recent lows are the 138 area. And so they are, uh, you know, that's the place where they're going to try to hold on. If it takes that out, uh, then, you know, you uh, you got further downside to go. Uh, right now, I would think that, uh, you know, how like that goal was, it gave you a rally, then a pullback. And then uh, you're hoping for another rally. Well, this rally would be above 150. And so if we were to get above 150, then uh, maybe the winds of change are blowing. And then it might make sense to get in because you'd have a little momentum on your side. And 156 is the 50-day average. So it might make sense to see if you can at least get above the 150 area, uh, unless you're just looking for a quick trade. And if you're looking for a quick trade, you know, see uh, versus the 138 low versus where we are now. It's getting pretty close to that and see if uh, that's worth defending against. But, um, you know, like I say, uh, for short-term traders, 138, 143 is not too bad of a differential. And for um, longer-term traders, uh, you know, trying to wait to see if it gets momentum above 150 and maybe some news that's positive wouldn't be the worst thing in the world as well. Okay. Uh, Larry. Larry. Yeah, so, yeah, with Win again, it's one of these that is sitting right here on major support, so kind of like Tesla. So if you start getting a separation on a closing basis below this kind of 138, call it, you know, 137, give it a little room, then it could be down here pretty fast to this, you know, last major support level back around 125 or so where you see these weekly moving averages. So this is a hundred period moving average right here. So I would not be shorting it here because this is a place where if it's going to hold, it needs to hold right here. Like that number you're talking about this 138 level. And if it holds here, you could get some kind of, you know, who knows the catalyst that could push it. And then it has a retracement rally back to 152. If that breaks then you can get a nice retracement rally up here all the way to, you know, 166 on that level. So this is kind of a, 
uh, an area where you just want to watch. And if you do, though, get a closing on a sep you know, on a closing basis, then you could take a shot for the downside move all through. Yeah, I, I agree with Jim on this one. This was a pretty classic Elliott wave pattern. If we look back, you know, from 2017 until now, until current. Um, excuse me, I had to, had to sneeze there. Hope I'm muted in time. So look at this move starting at the beginning of 17. This is a, is a clear wave three. Here's wave one, two, three. Huge move up, up to 200 bucks. A super nice. A, B, C, wave four, right into this Fibonacci retracement zone. Uh, it's running out of momentum. You see the down moves are getting smaller. Um, so I think Jim's right. You would watch for this thing to start breaking above prior highs and see if it's going to head up into a continuation of that original trend. It has not proven it yet. It could go deeper. But I would, be, I would not try to short it here. I think we've all said that. I would wait for proof of the next move up and it's not here yet but you could anticipate it and be watching for that and that could be a good one That's i think uh one of the a couple of other things just as an aside you know for every action there is a reaction and maybe we haven't really seen all of it like on the tax cuts you know when you give away 40 percent of your revenue that's an action and i don't think we know exactly what the reaction is going to be um in the economy and the fiscal policy and the and the interest rates and all that kind of stuff from that very very big action giving away 40 percent of your revenue as the government and uh this trade war and tariffs uh you know this is not a game show either and uh, there's serious money serious relationships serious stuff going on here and i don't know that we're 100 percent sure uh, exactly how this all shakes out and uh is there any irresponsible nature to these major changes of uh, taxes and uh, and tariffs? You know what I mean? Because yeah, these are big things that are going on. Uh, and, um, you know, when you do big things, sometimes there's a uh, consequence to them. You know what I mean? And I don't know that the jury's out. So there could be a lot of volatility, um, you know, in these markets uh, coming as far as uh, China and Europe is concerned. Because like I say, uh, they are all pretty heavily on the defensive right now and a little push in the back uh, on the DAX, uh, you know, the German stock market and another little push in the back on the Shanghai. And things could get a little hairy over there. You know, Babo's uh, selling off pretty good today as well. So it does look like the Chinese stocks are, are selling off pretty good. And I know the uh, German stocks were selling off. So I think it could get a little wild here in the month of September. We'll have to see what goes on. Yeah, you know, I've been trading 25 years now. And I, I, uh, I cannot recall a time where there was not uncertainty. There was, there's always been something on the horizon that was, you know, potentially cataclysmic. What I do know is we can make money if the market goes up. And we can make money if the market goes down. If we've got a system that's tried and true and we have the discipline to follow it and not start betting the farm on hunches, but to trade a system and rules and uh, a discipline and then discipline to follow it. And, yeah. you know, do, you know, if the market does go down, you know, it, it takes the steps up and it takes the elevator down. We can make a ton of money in a falling market in a disciplined way. So it's going to go or, down. Or it could you know, be a melt. It could be a melt up that they're talking about in the fourth quarter, because maybe uh, the German and the Chinese roll over because of the tariffs, and everybody plows into the U.S. So, like you say, it, when you have a discipline, you have an approach. Uh, obviously, those are just sidebars that we're talking about. And right. uh, but uh, what do you call it? Um, you know, it, it could cause volatility. It could be positive volatility as well. Right. And you know, the thing about the market is it moves. It goes up and it goes down. <laughs> yeah. I just don't see a flat time ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't think we're going to have to worry about boredom in the next 90 days. Hey, you know, you talked about several stocks, you know, with a, with a bleed off in volume. I think we're through the dog days of summer. And that may have a, have a role as well. The institutional players are out, you know, yep. out of Martha's Vineyard or wherever they go. Um, right. So, you know, that, I think we're coming out of summer and we're probably going to see more volatility just as, as a natural consequence of, you know, more participants back into the market. We're heading into the midterms. That's going to get exciting. Um, right. We'll see. Um, we got time for one more, and uh, it's Pepsi. Uh, <laughs> Pepsi and Coke. You know, I'm, I, I got to tell this anecdote. I remember in a, in a business school, um, micro uh, microeconomics. Our professor, final exam. He said, 
tell me what business Coke and Pepsi are in. And if you tell me that they're in the business of selling colored sugar water, you're going to fail this course. Uh, so anyway, uh, what do you guys think of Pepsi? The stock. My, the my, ver my very crude uh, uh, fundamental analysis was I've been to a few places here and uh, someone who was with me was ordering a code and they said, we only carry Pepsi. So I don't know if that means anything. Uh, but... Uh, as far as the stock is concerned, it was doing great. It uh, went all the way up towards 120, and it has rolled over a little bit. Let's take a look at the technicals on the 50 and the 200-day and see if it's telling us anything. That's their strategy, by the way. That's why they Pepsi, see, that's why they Pepsi see, bought, yeah. bought Taco Bell and, and Pizza Hut and all these other things. You know, Go buy the spigots, and then you get to control what comes out of them. That's it. No, and and for whatever reason, maybe they're giving kickbacks to the people who buy. Uh, you know, maybe they're giving a certain amount of money out of every cup that they sell or whatever. But um, the um, there seems to be more people buying it uh, right now. The two hundred days at one ten. You're at one eleven, so you're right on the number. The fifty days at one twelve, so you're right on the traffic zone here. Uh, somewhere around this one ten area, you certainly would like to see uh, any kind of selling stop. Right now, frankly, I would probably want it to uh, stop going down and then make t and take out that recent high. So, you know, if you could get back above the uh, one twenty area. Uh, which was January, well, January's high, no, the more recent high here, about 115, I guess, or so. Uh, if it got a, a, above the more recent high, and then I would probably use my stop underneath whatever low we're going to create now. So basically, you're having a pullback now, find out where that stops, and then if you can take out that recent high, use the recent stop low as your get-out point and uh, ride the train back up if it'll do that for you. The volume has been very good uh, in the 50-day basis, uh, 5.5 million versus 4.8. So, you know, the activity on the stock's been good. Um, again, you know, it had a 20% run uh, this year from the low to the high almost. So I would say, like I say, right now, let's see if this pullback holds at the 110 level, and let's see if the recent highs around 115 or so can get taken out. And then you'd have a pullback behind you, and you'd have momentum ahead of you, and that might not be a bad time to take a shot. All right. Larry, Coke or Pepsi? Before you do the chart, Coke or Pepsi, what do you think? Oh, gosh, that's a good one. I like them both. But uh, I always think about Pepsi for my grandmother's house. She always had Pepsi for some reason and not Coke. So it always brings back good memories. So I like go. Pepsi. Uh, and as far as the, the charts, I mean, it's just you've got layers of support down here. So I would just let this thing kind of drift down and see if it holds the support. So, again, you've got major support right where it is right here, 200-day moving average. And then you, you can see the, you've got these other moving averages down below. And then on the weekly, you've got – this cluster of all these weekly moving averages. So it needs to hold here. You know, if it can hold this 110, it looks, you know, we'll see if it can consolidate, then push back up. But if it starts to break this level here, you can see this 38210, looks call it 109 to give it some room. Then, you know, you've got potential to push, push on down maybe to 105. But right here, I would just be watching it like a hawk. Like a hawk. All right. Um, you know, Pepsi, Pretty interesting. I, I, they just lost their CEO, right? Two weeks ago, I think it was. And and with nobody at the helm, they went and made a big acquisition for a uh, you know a healthier drink company. Have you guys stood at the at the drink cooler at the store lately? You know, to get a soda pop or something. It's like what happened, right? It used to be you know fruit juice or pop, and then Snapple came out. And now it's like how do you even choose? The, it's amazing the pro proliferation of brands and flavors and stuff. And a lot of a lot of competition for for the cooler, um, and apparently Pepsi's trying to get into healthier drinks because everybody's figured out soda pop's not really that good for you. Um, but I'm with Larry on the technical analysis here. Um, I'd like to short it, but boy, it's sitting on some pretty hard support, so it's going to have to break through that. And then you got to see what the next level is, and if there's any um, any profit to be had there. So. Nothing there yet, and you know you got to keep watching it, it. It's got kind of a stair step of support levels that you just got to keep paying attention to. Um, well, hey, we're out of time. That's it, and we got through almost the whole list. We got you know four fifths through the list. We did pretty good. And uh, yeah, back at you. <laughs> um, it's not like we had a dog bark there. Um, David, I'm gonna turn it back to you to wrap us up, man. Oh, do uh, you guys want to do a quick uh, closing statement? Why not? Yeah, real, yeah, real quick. 
Uh, for everybody who's listening here, to, for everybody who's out there listening today, uh, this is Jim Kenny, and the Option Professor has a weekly update uh, podcast. So uh, if you'd like to get the link for that and be able to participate and uh, and check that out every week, we cover uh, obviously a lot of different information and uh, a lot of strategies. You know, when the markets are uh, way way high, you know, and you want to consider things like <clears throat> writing calls against your stock or doing collars where you sell a call and buy a put to bracket your stock. Uh, there's a lot of different strategies that come into play during certain setups. So uh, if you uh, email me over at uh, optionprofessor at gmail.com, uh, we can get you that link and you can start checking out the weekly podcast. Thanks a lot for being here, uh, everybody. And thanks a lot, Dean, and everybody as well. All right. Larry, final thoughts. Yeah, thanks again, Dean and David, for having me again today. I always enjoy this. So if you uh, want to come out and check out Power Cycle Trading, just go to powercycletrading.com. And you can go to upcoming live events or webinars. Just click on that and you can see whatever, you know, live uh, webinars we have coming up. So we've got a good one coming up this Saturday. So come uh, check us out. Come visit us at PowerCycleTrading.com. Got a lot of free educational material you can get uh, as well. So, again, thanks for having me and uh, good luck to everybody for their trading for the rest of the week. Hey, you got to scroll down because I, I see this picture of a guy going to step on a banana peel. I don't know what the caption is. It come here and get tripped up. What? <laughs> okay watch your feet <laughs> watch your feet watch your step yeah very cool okay well uh hey thanks guys and again i'm dean jenkins uh, follow me trades.com uh here's a trade we took last week we took we went long on chronos uh cannabis stock got long at 714 took it up 12 bucks so we got um well, a home run on that one nearly 100 percent. so if you want to get in on the next trade, they don't, they don't all do that, but once in a while we catch good ones like that. Uh, come check it out here at followmetrades.com. Uh, we have a, a weekly stock pick uh, service, stock advisory service, same things. I'm trading my own account with my own money. You can come hit the big green button, find out more about it. And if you just want to check out what I'm doing, uh, sign up for my newsletter. It's free. Every week I give a market analysis and uh, talk about my outlook. So Love to have you come, come check it out. Dean Jenkins, follow me trades.com. And now, David Cosmider, back to you. All right. Uh, thanks, guys. I uh, want to make sure everyone uh, knows how to get in touch with you guys if uh, after you gave them all this great, uh, great analysis. Yeah. So, uh, just a reminder for everyone please be sure to subscribe to Timing Research on YouTube or wherever uh, you listen to podcasts. You can also go to timingresearch.com to get access to. Uh, any of the uh, archives for the shows. Uh, uh, let's see. The Crowd Forecast News show was off yesterday for the market holiday, but both shows will be back um, next week. So uh, September 10th, Monday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, and uh, for the next episode of Crowd Forecast News and the next episode of this show, September 11th, uh, Tuesday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And uh, I want to thank my guests again for today. Dean Jenkins of followmetrades.com, Larry Gaines of powercycletrading.com, and Jim Kenny of optionprofessor.com. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thanks, David.